Hey guys, it's Mark from Ericsson Machine and Performance. I'm here, I'm going to show you how to assemble a Yamaha 701. This happens to be a big bore. Um, I'm going to go through everything, how to put the seals in correctly, how to torque everything down with a torque wrench, how to glue the cases where you don't put way too much case sealing on it. Also, I've seen a whole bunch of people lately posting questions on how to set the o-rings properly in an ada head um, where you know if you pull it as you go along the o-ring ends up looking like it's significantly longer than it needs to be so i'm going to go through everything on how i personally build my engines um how i like them um so we're using wasner pistons on this they're 85 millimeter pistons stock stroke crank um, big bore sleeves, um, and the motor's fully ported. What I start off doing, I take the pistons, and I put one E-clip in each side. The clips are designed to either be facing up or down. I like to face them down. If you look carefully that way, when you get over here, it's easy to pop it back out whenever you go to unassemble it. When I put them together, I put them together in a set, so that way I can always put the outside clips in, so I'm not trying to fiddle around in between the two. I found that an easy thing for myself. Um, crankshaft, I lubricated with two-stroke oil before any of this, so let's get started. I start off with the cases. Um, what I like to do, I take the cylinder, Flip it upside down, take the cases, set them on top. So now everything I've done is already cleaned, ready to go. So what we'll now do is we will take the seals and we're going to grease them. So the way the seals, the rear seals go like this, where there's the seal without the tits. That goes to the inside, the seal with the tits goes to the outside, and then the front seal on Yamaha's, the true OEM seals actually have tits as well on the front. It's hard to see here, but you can see there's a couple tits here. So that faces this way all the way over here. So that's how these end up setting. So what I do... I like this stuff. It's called assembly goo. It's actually designed for transmissions, um, but it works great for O-rings, seals, um, and it's designed for seals. So the first thing I do is I pack in between the two seals. So the seal without the tits, I end up packing grease in here, which helps the seal not burn up. You don't have to go crazy, but I do do a good amount of goo. Try not to make it super messy. Put the other seal on. And then on the inside of the two. So now that those two are done, the front seal just gets around the outside. This is just really to lubricate it so, you know, it's not dry where you can burn it up. So the easiest way to do this, what I do is I'll put the seal on the crankshaft and then I'll actually set it and throw a couple threads on the coupler so that way it ends up standing up straight for you. It makes it nice and easy. So I'll stand the crank straight up Take the seals that I just greased, put them on like so, throw the coupler on. We're not looking to tighten this down. We're just using this as a stand. Flip it the other way. Put the front seal tits up. Now that we did that, what I like to do is I like to dry the outside of the seal. 
you don't have to glue on Yamaha's. You know, certain engines have seal issues where the front seal likes to push out, stuff like that. Those, you know, some builders like to glue them in. 701s, if you put the seals in properly, they really don't move. So, now that the seals are in place, I personally like Honda Bond. You know, 1211, three bonds, great. Yama Bond, Cowie Bond. Basically, any case sealant is going to work great. You want to know what you're doing, though. Um, this stuff, just a dabble, do you? You know, when you see this shit pouring out of the side of the cases all over the place, honestly, it's showing whoever built this motor, whoever assembled it, had no idea what they were doing. So, what I do, let me adjust the camera, move the crank out of the way a little bit. So, I do... A little dab by where the seals are going to go and then I just lightly very lightly spread it I'm going to come back with my finger another dab where the seals are going to go these cases are, are machine perfect so you're really just sealing the slight imperfections so it really doesn't take much sealant to seal the cases properly if you're doing it right. All right, that should be enough. So now I'll go over it with my finger. And all I'm looking to do is that I have a super thin tack coat around everything. So this motor, you don't have to, but this is a performance motor. Um, I also end up using a bearing retainer um, where it's just a slight drop on each bearing. Um, I actually do it on the bottom part of the cases away from the pins so the pins don't glue into the cases. Um, I found... Um, Sometimes you end up with a motor that has fretting where the bearing vibrates a little bit. Um, and I found this helps that issue. So now we will take the crankshaft. We will drop this in, align the seals, and then start setting where the pins are. So now all the pins are set. So now what I end up doing, I take one last little dab on each corner of the seals. And then not to make a huge mess, I clean it all up as best as I can. I'll take the bottom of the cases. Go ahead and take some bearing retainer. I'm going to just take a tiny drop where each bearing goes. This is also a dabble do you. I wipe it up and down the raceway. And we set the bottom half and put the case in place. And we'll throw the case bolts in. So the case bolts, I torque them down to 20 foot pounds, I step them. I go from 11 foot pounds and then go to 20.
Now I bust out the torque wrench. So what I will do first, just to make sure everything's okay so far, this is just a check. We're just going to rotate the crank to make sure nothing feels like it's sticking, which it doesn't. Bring this to 11 foot-pounds, and then I step the torque. So I'm going to go caddy corner. Basically, the idea on this is, you know, the case flex as you bolt it down. If you bolt it on the outside and then go in, it won't seal properly. At least it flexes down together, which is the general idea. So now we're going to go up to 20 foot pounds. Now that I torqued them all, I'm actually going to go through them all and double check. Alrighty, those are all good. We're going to rotate the crank again. Everything feels smooth. Now what I end up doing, I want to oil this, so I oil all the oil galleys for the crank, fill them up, I lubricate the rod, You know, you, you want to have everything well lubricated so when you first go to fire this thing up, there's a whole bunch of oil. You're not going to run into any issues um, on locking the motor up. So now we're good to go there. It's time to put the pistons in. So grab two top end bearings, throw them in the rods, once again lubricate them, as I lubricate I like to rotate the bearing, which it just lubricates all the different needle bearings in there. So we're good to go. So now, as I said before, get the grease off them. As I said before, I put the middle clips in. You know, so the pistons are going to go like this, the arrow pointing to the exhaust port. So before we do that, we're going to put the rings on, then we'll put the piston in. So once again, a little more oil. I lubricate the ring lands. Now on Wasner pistons, I don't know if you can see, there's a little half circle bit out of them. So they are directional. So you want to line it up. There we go, one and two. Same thing with the other piston.
Ring one. Ring two. Rings are in. They move freely. Make sure there's no issues, no snags. So now we're going to take the pin. I'm going to take a little oil, put it on the pin. Go ahead and also take a drop of oil, put it in the pin bores. Slide the pin in. Now the one thing, I never leave a piston without a clip in. So I, right now, this clip will go in before this piston goes on, so you can never forget to do something like that. Um, it's catastrophic if for some reason you forget to put one of these pins in. So, put the pin in, put the clip in. Make sure everything's seated properly. I'll rotate this piston down. Do the same thing to the other side. So we're going to put a little oil in the pin bores. Put the pin in. Put it on the rod. Put the other clip. So the way I put, you have to be very careful. I love these clips. They're phenomenal. Much better than spiral locks. And uh, you just have to know how to put them on carefully. You can't squeeze them too much. If you do that, you can actually damage them. It's the main reason these end up failing is somebody squeezes them too hard and makes them egg shaped they don't end up sitting properly in the groove so what i do is i set them down in i try to do this all by hand and then push it slightly up with a pick and that went in perfect just by hand and that's all you need to do now that that's all done, I'm going to put the studs in. So the way I put studs in, I use a stud tool. These work great with an impact. Just lock them on and run them in. There we go, all the studs are in. Now time for base gasket. Sorry about that. So you gotta line the locating pins on the cases to the base gasket, drop it down. Make sure it's seated properly. Now we're going to take the cylinder What I do with these, one, after you have any cylinder machined by anybody, you want to clean them in the sink with warm, soapy water. You want to wash the hell out of them. After you do that, quickly coat them with a two-stroke oil because the cast iron sleeves will rust very quickly. Um, and then what I end up doing is I take two-stroke oil on um, a mechanic's um, paper towel which there's no lint on them 
and I keep wiping it with two stroke oil until there's no gray grit coming off of it. Um, you know, all the little hone marks that you see are technically, you know, microscopic scratches. So those scratches can hold different grit and grime in there. You want to try to get that out before you assemble this um, to help everything out. So now we'll take the jugs. You know, the easy way to do this. So I do it. I hold the piston like this, hold the rings together, slide it down. And it works great for me. Um, if you haven't done it before, I recommend get a buddy to give you a hand. Um, stock cylinders are easier. Um, ported cylinders get a little more difficult because the sleeves are stepped um, and cut funny so they can hang up in different weird places. Um, but like anything, practice makes perfect. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Um, it's, there's no secret science to it. It's just practice. Take this, take a paper towel, wipe everything clean, and then I'm going to coat this with oil. So now what I end up doing is I fill this up all the way around the top of the piston. Bring the piston up and then bring it down slowly so you leave a film of oil going all the way down. Now we'll do the same thing to the other side. Drop it down slowly. As you can see, it's leaving a film of oil all the way down. So now we're good to go. So because this is a surf motor, I like to put O-rings and drop them down. Uh, it just helps the next time you go to take them apart where the salt doesn't build up on the bottom of the threads and make it a complete nightmare to get everything apart. Salt can be a real pain in the balls um, for anybody that's played with this stuff. Now on to the right way to do the O-rings on an ADA head. Alrighty, so we have the long O-ring, the two dome O-rings, and the two lower dome O-rings. So once again, I go to the assembly goo. The great stuff with this, it's really cheap. I think a container of it is like $9 on Amazon. Um, it lasts me years, you know, and I build a couple hundred engines a year. Um, so you buy one, honestly, you know, if you build a couple engines a year, it'll probably last you and your kid's lifetime. Um, so just once again, a little dab will do you. Um, you're just looking for a small amount in all the O-ring grooves. So the main idea on this is... This stuff ends up gluing the O-ring to the O-ring groove, makes it significantly easier, and the O-ring's not popping out when you go to drop the head down. 
Um, then all of a sudden you go to put it together and it's leaking water out of everywhere and you're cursing up and down. Um, so this makes life significantly easier. Uh, luckily ADA is one of the head manufacturers that they keep their O-ring grooves fairly tight. Um, some of the other manufacturers, um, the grooves are super loose, so it's next to near impossible if you don't use something like this to keep the o-ring in place um, they also make a green assembly goo which is even thicker than this um, so which I also have and you know that's mainly used for those other type heads that uh, you really need something extra sticky to do it so now I'll take the o-ring you know with a little bit of the goo I have on my finger I'll run it around I start at the center as I said, I, I don't pull it all, I just push straight down. So the biggest thing is when you pull these, you know, some people pull them, cut them, super glue them, and call it good. You know, these are designed for a certain wall thickness of the O-ring. If you end up doing that, um, the O-ring ends up being narrower, so you don't get as good of a seal on the O-ring. Um, these are designed to be a specific length. If you do it right, they will be the proper size. Um, it's just doing it right. There you go. So now take a paper towel again, wipe the excess goo off. Put the center O-rings, don't forget them. Now we'll take the domes. I'll put a little bit of the goo on the lower O-ring. Drop them in. A little goo on that O-ring, drop it in. And then same thing. Put a little goo on this upper compression o-ring groove to the other side the nice thing with this stuff you do this you know you could basically shake this head upside down the o-rings aren't going to come out of place um, and this grease is designed four o-rings which is you know phenomenal but if you don't want to buy this stuff um, basically any grease will do more or less the thicker the better now that we have the schmoo in here go ahead and put the o-rings so these are the main compression o-rings set them down nice and flat And we'll set the head on. The head, when you put it on, the water fittings you want on the opposite side of the exhaust port. You want the water to come in the exhaust, go all the way around, and then out the opposite side to cool the motor completely. Bring this over. Start throwing the head bolts in. Start them by hand to make sure that nothing's cross-threaded and then I run them in with it, an impact just to more or less speed things up a little bit. Same thing with the girdle studs.
now to make sure nothing stupid can happen I wipe down over spark plug holes and I take some painters tape throw it over it so that way nothing drops in makes us have to take this bad boy apart again now we will go back to torquing everything so I'm going to start off by torquing the girdle so the girdle is going to 28 foot pounds so I'm going to start with 20 So these can range anywhere from 28 to 32, depending on compression um, and setup and, you know, builder preference. Now I'm going to go and double check everyone. Now we're going to go to the head bolts. So these are going to be 19. I'm going to start off with 12. Now we're going to step it up to 19. Once again, we're just going to double check everything. There you go guys, that is how you assemble Yamaha 701. So this is going to basically be the same for uh, 6M6 Yamaha 650, a 61X Yamaha 701, a 62T Yamaha 701, or a 64X Yamaha 760. Uh, they're all basically the same the way they go together. Um, the only difference would be, you know, the reeds and so forth. Um, and this bad boy is ready to rip. I'm going to make another video. Um, it'll probably be in another couple days when I release it, how to pressure test this. Um, it's always a great idea, especially when something's ported. But in general, um, to pressure test the assembly... Um, what that basically does is I like to do it with an intake manifold. If not, I use a block off plate for the intake to the exhaust. It's great to use the intake with the reeds. 
um, because that's your full engine assembly sealing. Um, so you just block off the carbs and then you block off the exhaust outlet um, and you pressure test it. Um, I made my own pressure tester years ago, which has worked phenomenal for me. Um, I'm also going to show you guys how to make it. This is all it is. It's a basic regulator um, that I set basically as low as you can set it. You know, I set it down to 8 or 9 PSI um, and a good quality gauge. So I get this running to where it's 8 or 9 PSI. I fill the block. I lock it. When we get the 8 or 9 PSI, you lock it and you let it sit for a minute or two. You make sure there's no drop. If there's no drop, you know the assembly is perfectly sealed. There's no air leak and it's good to go. Um, if you don't do it, you're running a risk of having an air leak, having the motor run lean and blowing up on you for no reason. Um, and it's normally something stupid that has it, uh, where it's, you know, a carb gasket that's leaking, a cracked intake manifold. Um, there's a whole bunch of little bullshit that you miss. Um, a nick on a gasket, something like that. Um, so it, it's a great way to be safe with what you're doing. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. Um, if you do, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. Um, and have a good night.